Okay, so first of all, I want to thank the organizers for giving me the opportunity to speak. And then just a few words of motivation before I start. So I don't think I need to convince any of you that it's generally a useful thing to decompose a representation category into blocks and then study one block at a time in order to understand things better. Uh, so generally, there's a problem with it when you have, say, a tensor category, like, say, a category of representations of groups, then usually the blocks are not going to be close under tensor products. So the block decomposition is not going to be so useful to study the model structure. And what I want to explain in this talk is how, when you have a category of rational representations of an algebraic group, of a reactive algebraic group, you can get around this problem, partially at least, by um, taking a quotient of your category by a tensor theory. Okay, so the setup is going to be that we fix an algebraic because field of positive characteristic and a simply connected simple algebraic group over the field, uh, which is going to come with a root system and a finite vial group, and then we form the affine vial group, which is a schema direct product of the finite vial group by its uh, by the root lattice. And then we also fix uh, a weight lattice for the group and we make a fixed choice of dominant weights. Okay. And throughout, we're also going to assume that the prime is bigger than the cost of the number. Um, and uh, then we have some nice properties of this category of rational representations of the algebraic group that I mentioned before. So, firstly, it's the highest weight category, uh, whose weight percent is going to be the set of dominant weights that I just mentioned. Uh, so, I think we've seen this uh, a couple of times before, so I don't need to go into details, but Essentially, it means that we have a collection of simple objects that are indexed by these dominant weights, but then we also have standard objects, cosmic objects, and filtering objects, and the indicopoid and filterings are defined by having filtration by the standards and the cost standards. Um, then the second important property is that this is a tensor category, and moreover, um, it's been proved by first Steve Donkin in most cases, and then Oligi Mathieu in all the other cases. Um, that the subcategory of tilting module is closed under taking tensor products. And that's going to be important for us. And then thirdly, um, we have a decomposition of this category into so-called linkage classes. Um, so you can think of these as a set of as, like, essentially like blocks. It's just not all of them are actually blocks. Some of them split further, but most of them are blocks. Um, and these are indexed by orbits of the up and y group on the weight lattice. Just you don't take the usual action. You you take the action where you expand the like you you dilate the action of the weight lattice by p, and you shift the center of the action down from zero to minus rho. Okay. Um, and then there's one block that we can single out, namely the one corresponding to the orbit that contains zero, and that's what we call the principal block. Um, and then as before, in principle, when you want to like, I mean, it's this is a very nice decomposition, but it doesn't help us very much when you want to study tensor products. Because say if you take two simple modules in the principal block, you tensor them together, in principle, you might get indicopause and direct signs in all kinds of different linkage classes. That's problem. Um, and uh, before I explain to you how we can get around this problem, I need to introduce one more thing, uh, namely the tensor ideal of negligible tilting modules. Um, so this is the concept of sort of semi simplification that we've already seen in the talk of Kevin Coulombier, I think. Um, essentially, what you do is um, when you take the the set of tilting modules with the property that all the indecomposable direct summons have dimension divisible by p, then that forms what's called a tensor ideal. So it's a set of tilting modules uh, which is closed under taking direct sums, taking direct summons, and also under taking tensor products with an arbitrary uh, tilting module, which may not be inside the idea. Okay? Um, and uh, well, then it turns out that we can form a, a quotient category, which is going to be a tensor category because we take a quotient by a tensor idea. And it's also going to be semi simple. So, this so called Melinda category is a unique semi simple quotient of the tilting modules. And uh, now comes a new definition. Um, we define another tilting, another tensor idea, uh, which I call I, and this is going to be a tensor idea in the representation category, and not only the tilting modules. And we define it to be the smallest uh, tensor ideal in the representation category that contains the tensor ideal N that we found in the previous slide, and it's closed in the so-called two out of three property. So whenever we have a short exit sequence in the representation category, and Two of the three things in product sequence belong to the idea, then we also want the third one to be inside the idea. Okay? 
And um, then I call I the tensor field of singular G modules and the quotient by it the regular quotient. So these terms are sort of generic, uh, some reasons for making making this definition. For example, you can show that this is the smallest tensor ID of the two or three property containing all the so-called singular blocks, so blocks uh, where the indexing weight lies on a P hyperplane for the Archimedes yeah. Um, And then uh, we're going to write uh, underline rem zero of G for the essential image of the principal block in the regular quotient. So we take its image under the, under the canonical quotient factor. Uh, and now we come to the main results. So the first result says that if you look at this essential image uh, of the principal block in the regular quotient, then this is going to be closed under tensor products, which means that you can view it as a monoidal category with tensor product induced by the tensor uh, product of the ambient category. And then um, secondly, it turns out that this principal block in the regular quotient actually controls the entire structure of the quotient category. So in other words, we get a we get an external tensor product decomposition of the regular quotient as a tensor product of its principal block with the validity category, where when I write the of this box product, what I mean is we take the category where objects are pairs of objects and home spaces are tensor product of home spaces, and then we we formally add indirect sums. So we take the added closure. Okay, and um, because the second factor, the within the category here is semi simple, this really means that all the information that you need is contained in the monoidal category that you get by enjoying the principal, the image of the principal block in the portion of the monoidal structure. Uh, okay, um, if you're familiar with this theory, the way I like to think about this is to, to call this year a linkage principle for tensor products and this year translation principle for tensor products. Um, and then finally, some outlook uh, that involves some catalytification to uh, go with the name of the conference. So first of all, by a conjecture of Dolly Williamson and Simon Rich, that was proved by Roman Bezrukatnikov and Simon Rich, and then again by Joshua Chiapara, there's a categorical action of the Hecke category for the affine value group on the principal block. And it would be very desirable to describe tensor products within this, this image of the principal block in the regular portion in terms of this, this categorical action. So more precisely, you want to take complexes of surrogate bimodules, and these should define, uh, define what, for example, tensoring with one specific simple module looks like. And then secondly, um, this is working properly with Johannes Flake, who is in Bonn. Um, it turns out that decompositions like in the second theorem that I showed you on the previous slide also exist for other kinds of categories. So for example, um, you can do this for the abelian envelopes of the interpolation categories from Kevin Kuhlman Gates talk, and you get a decomposition that essentially, essentially tells you exactly the same thing uh, that I told you on the previous slide but for this, this other category. And uh, we are thinking about the question how much further this can be to the next. And so on, so thank you.